the physical relations, the geometrical relations of measurement, the dimensional relations, and the various grades of extensive relations involved in the physical and geometrical theory of nature are derivative of a series of societies of increasing width of prevalence, the more special societies being included in the wider societies. This situation constitutes the physical and geometrical order of nature. Beyond these societies, there is disorder, where disorder is a relative term expressing the lack of importance, possessed by the defining characteristics of the societies in question, beyond their own bounds. When those societies decay, it will not mean that their defining characteristics cease to exist, but that they lapse into unimportance for the actual entities in question. The term disorder refers to a society only partially influential in impressing its characteristics in the form of prevalent laws. Chaotic disorder means lack of dominant definition of compatible contrasts and the satisfactions attained in consequent enfeeblement of intensity. It means the lapse towards slighter actuality. The Timaeus of Plato and the Scholium of Newton are the two statements of cosmological theory which have had the chief influence on Western thought. To the modern reader, the Timaeus, considered as a statement of scientific details as in comparison with the Scholium, simply foolish, but what it lacks in superficial detail, it makes up for by its philosophic depth. If it be read as an allegory, it conveys profound truth. In the Scholium, space and time with all their current mathematical properties are ready-made for the material masses. The material masses are ready-made for the forces which constitute their action and reaction and space and time. And material masses and forces are alike ready-made for the initial motions which the deity impresses throughout the universe. In the Timaeus, there are many phases and statements which find their final lucid expression in the Scholium. While noting this concurrence of the two great cosmological documents guiding Western thought, it cannot be too clearly understood that within its limits of abstraction, what the Scholium says is true, and that it is expressed with the lucidity of genius. Thus, any cosmological document which cannot be read as an interpretation of the Scholium is worthless, but there is another side to the Timaeus which finds no analogy in the Scholium. In general terms, this side of the Timaeus may be termed its metaphysical character, that is to say, its endeavor to connect the behavior of things with the formal nature of things. The behavior apart from the things is abstract, and so are the things apart from their behavior. Newton, wisely for his purposes, made this abstraction which the Timaeus endeavors to avoid. In the first place, the Timaeus connects behavior with the ultimate molecular characters of the actual entities. Plato conceives the notion of definite societies of actual molecular entities, each society with its defining characteristics. He does not conceive this assemblage of societies as cosa sui, does conceive it as the work of subordinate deities, who are the animating principles of those departments of nature. In Greek thought, either poetic or philosophic, the separation between the phusis and such deities had not that absolute character which it has for us who have inherited the Semitic Jehovah. Newton could have accepted a molecular theory as easily as Plato. But there is this difference between them. Newton would have been surprised at the modern quantum theory and at the dissolution of quanta into vibrations. Plato would have expected it. Well, we note the many things said by Plato and the Timaeus, which are now foolishness. We must also give him credit for that aspect of his teaching, in which he was 2,000 years ahead of his time. Plato accounted for the sharp-cut differences between kinds of natural things by assuming an approximation of the molecules of the fundamental kinds, respectively, to the mathematical forms of the regular solids. He also assumed that certain qualitative contrasts 
in occurrences such as that between musical notes depended on the participation of these occurrences in some of the simpler ratios between integral terms. He thus obtained a reason why there should be an approximation to sharp cut differences between kinds of molecules and why there should be sharp cut relations of harmony standing out amid dissonance. Thus contrast, as the opposite of incompatibility, depends on a certain simplicity of circumstance, but the higher contrasts depend on the assemblage of a multiplicity of lower contrasts, this assemblage again exhibiting higher types of simplicity. It is well to remember that the modern quantum theory, with its surprises in dealing with the atom, is only the latest instance of a well-marked character of nature, in which each particular instance is only explained by some ad hoc dogmatic assumption. The theory of biological evolution would not in itself lead us to expect the sharply distinguished genera and species which we find in nature. There might be an occasional bunching of individuals around certain typical forms, but there is no explanation of the almost complete absence of intermediate forms. Again, Newton's scholium gives no hint of the 92 possibilities for atoms or of the limited number of ways in which atoms can be combined so as to form molecules. Physicists are now explaining these chemical facts by means of conceptions which Plato would have welcomed. There is another point in which the organic philosophy only repeats Plato. In the Timaeus, the origin of the present cosmic epoch is traced back to an aboriginal disorder chaotic according to our ideals. This is the evolutionary doctrine of the philosophy of organism. Plato's notion has puzzled critics who are obsessed with the Semitic theory of a holy transcendent God creating out of nothing an accidental universe. Newton held the Semitic theory. The Scholium made no provision for the evolution of matter, very naturally, since the topic lay outside its scope. The result has been that the non-evolution of matter has been a tacit presupposition throughout modern thought. Until the last few years, the sole alternatives were either the material universe, with its present type of order, is eternal, or else it came into being and will pass out of being according to the fiat of Jehovah. Thus on all sides, Plato's allegory of the evolution of a new type of order based on new types of dominant societies, became a daydream, puzzling to commentators. Milton, curiously enough, in his Paradise Lost, wavers between the Timaeus and the Semitic doctrine. This is only another instance of the intermixture of classical and Hebrew notions on which his charm of thought depends. In the description of Satan's journey across chaos, Satan discovers, quote, the secret of the hoary deep, a dark, illimitable ocean without bound, without dimension, where length, breadth, and height, and time and place are lost, where eldest night and chaos, ancestors of nature, hold eternal anarchy, amidst the noise of endless wars and by confusion stand." End quote. Milton is here performing for Plato the same poetic service that Lucretius performed for Democritus with less justification, since Plato was quite capable of being his own poet. Also the fact of Satan's journey helped to evolve order, for he left a permanent track, useful for the devils and the damned. The appeal to Plato in this section has been an appeal to the facts against the modes of expression prevalent in the last few centuries. These recent modes of expression are partly the outcome of a mixture of theology and philosophy, and are partly due to the Newtonian physics, no longer accepted as a fundamental statement. But language and thought have been framed according to that mold, and it is necessary to remind ourselves that this is not the way in which the world has been described by some of the greatest intellects. 
both for Plato and for Aristotle, the process of the actual world has been conceived as a real incoming of forms into real potentiality, issuing into that real togetherness which is an actual thing. Also for the Timaeus, the creation of the world is the incoming of a type of order, establishing a cosmic epoch. It is not the beginning of matter of fact, but the incoming of a certain type of social order.